Ready, ready, set, hike. Hello everyone, it's HHM TV. And we're starting our first of the One Tank Road Trips. We're in Ado, Ohio, and you're not gonna wanna miss what we have to show you today. Hot route. Let's go! So they really start off with the, uh, the, the cow hide, and they press it. Uh, using a machine to get the exact size of the panels that they're going to use. They're all run through a machine that kind of takes the uh, thickness to uh, the appropriate weight. One of the things that we see through the process is kind of putting foil stamps on the balls. A good example would be the Super Bowl logoed balls. So you have the Super Bowl logo um, that's actually pressed into the leather and then that's run through a series of stamps that has the colored foil to give that multicolored logo, if you will. And I think that's one thing, Chris, everything is kind of monitored and fine-tuned throughout the process to ensure quality. Yeah, and the nice thing about it too is it's still a human touch. You know, there's no robots in there, there's no uh, automated stuff. It's, it's a person behind that machine making sure it's running right. Yeah, I think that it's, it's a unique blend between uh, old world equipment, craftsmanship, and then looking towards the future with some of the new technology they incorporate. The panels of the ball have been kind of rolled to give it um, the right shape before it gets sewed together. The ball again then parts two different ways. The NFL balls, the Dukes, they go on to a special machine that will lock stitch these. Yeah, that's right, and this is really a critical piece. This is where somebody really earns their money because they have to match uh, the panels up just perfectly. They, there's a tolerance into where that seam needs to be, but it's lock stitched so it can't come apart, and this is really what ultimately is going to make that ball a success or uh, sort of a failure if this step isn't done correctly. Give us a highs and pose, Brock. Okay. All right, Mark, we got a rush order for HHM TV. All right. Once we have the lock stitching all complete, the ball is actually inside out when it gets sewn. So then it goes on to the turning table where the worker there, his name is Mark. It goes into a steamer to soften up the leather a little bit, make it more pliable. He puts a couple of extra little pushes on the on the points of it to help his process and, and, and turns this thing inside out. 2,500 balls a day they make it out of factory. Yeah, this is probably one of the more demanding jobs in, in the factory. I would say you and I tried our hand at this. I have to say that you were much better at turning the football than I was, but uh, it is not easy. Once we have this, the, uh, the ball turned, and then we'll go to the speed lacing station. Now, the speed lacing process takes about a minute and a half to complete. It is impressive to see how quickly they are able to lace that and how tight those laces can be. Yeah, and I think it's worth noting as well, this is the point in time where the air bladder gets put in the ball. Mm -hmm. Uh, the ball is going to receive some air so that the lacing can be done. There's technology that go on these bladders yes. that track all sort of statistics. So when you watch football and you see the next gen stats, uh, a large portion of those statistics are coming right from the football itself. So after the speed lacing is complete, it will go onto a pressure chamber where it will get pumped full of 125 PSI of air. So this pressurization test is kind of twofold. One, testing the bladder, make sure it's going to hold air, but two, by overinflating it, it gives the football its final shape. It will then be lowered back down to the official PSI of an NFL football, which is 13 PSI. And then from there, you get yourself a Duke. We got a Duke, Chris. This being our first one tank road trip, Chris, we think it's a great place for anybody to come and just, if you're interested with how things are made, Get a group of friends, get a school group, get a church group, whatever it might be. Monday through Friday, you can call, schedule a tour, and you're going to learn a ton. Uh, and I guarantee you're going to have a good time. It's just fascinating to see uh, all the work that goes into making these footballs. And what's really neat about it, too, I think, is you are able to see just how important the human touch is to the, to the process. You know, Brock, I'm looking at these footballs here. Yeah, Chris. And I just feel like mine are smaller than yours, but then I realized it's just your hands. <laughs> Basically, you know, you always know there's gonna be somebody that's gonna to have to man that machine. You can't automate this process. You can't just put a bunch of them on an assembly line and have them go through. You need human hands on it. You need the eyes to be able to diagnose what is going wrong with the balls and then to be able to correct it as you go through. So it's really kind of cool to see that process still alive 
uh, here in, in just outside of our area, just what an hour and 20 minutes away from Fort Wayne. So not hard to get to. Um, yeah. Call ahead, schedule, schedule your tour and, you know, get ready to see something really cool folks, because this is really neat. It's a really uh, unique experience that even if you're not a sports fan, I think you could really appreciate it. All right, folks, I hope you enjoyed our first one take road trip here to the Wilson Football Factory in Ada, Ohio. Guys, awesome place, right? Phenomenal time. Yeah, I think if you're interested in how things are made, this is worth getting a group of folks. You can call on Monday through Friday, schedule a tour. It's not that far from your neck of the woods. And uh, just fascinating, the technology behind Absolutely, all of yeah. it. It's yeah. unbelievable how many steps there are into making a football. It's, it's really a science. It really it, is. It really yeah, is. about 22 steps to make one of these footballs. Uh, we, we have been blessed with getting the uh, HHM TV logoed Super Bowl ball. So we want to thank the folks at Wilson for hooking us up on that front. And you know, can't recommend this tour enough. Uh, if you're in the neighborhood, make the trip. It's well worth it. Uh, great people here that take a lot of pride in making uh, this equipment. You're not going to want to miss it. So that's going to do it for this episode of HHM TV. I'm Brock. He's Kyle. He's Chris. Fill up the tank and hit the road. And stay tuned for the next One Tank Road Trip from HHM TV. Mm -hmm.